PACD stands for post-operative cognitive dysfunction and it's an area that we've been investigating uh, post anaesthesia and surgery for the last uh, more than 15 years. So the work that we've been doing is looking at patients who are having both non-cardiac and cardiac surgery and even light sedation and what we see is that uh, at about three months post-operatively those patients have an incidence of cognitive impairment which is objectively tested at around about 15 to 20 percent. So researchers are becoming more concerned about the effects of anaesthesia on the developing brain for a couple of reasons. Firstly the experiments which have been done in animals, which have been known for about a decade or so, have shown that if you expose juvenile animals, and some of the animals actually grow up with some neurodevelopmental problems. But on the other side of the coin, there's been some suspicion for some time that uh, neonates or young children that have major surgery are at greater risk of uh, poor neurodevelopmental outcome in the, in the long term. Our most recent work looked at prospectively assessing patients seven and a half years following cardiac surgery and we saw in those patients a prevalence of dementia of 30%. That's much greater than what we would expect in the general population. Um, so we've seen a higher, inc a higher prevalence rather of um, dementia in those patients postoperatively. Again, the predictive factors were uh, peripheral vascular disease and if the patients had some very subtle impairment at baseline. So although the patients weren't demented at baseline, um, they have a very subtle impairment that's only accessible by using a battery of neuropsychological tests and that was highly predictive of having longer term dementia. One thing that's important is not delaying the surgery, not avoiding anaesthesia and also the anaesthetist shouldn't try and use some sort of weird anaesthetic technique which they're not familiar with because anaesthetising children is you know, it's, it's a reasonably complex, it's a reasonably risky thing to do and if you try and do something novel or different then it might actually be worse for the child so you don't want to replace a theoretical risk with a real risk by doing something weird with your anaesthetic. As far as anaesthetic agents are concerned, there's, there's really nothing that the anaesthetist can do in terms of choosing anaesthetic agents that are going to have a better outcome from a cognitive point of view. As far as the family are concerned, patients can be educated, patients should be aware of the risk that there, there is a small proportion of patients, but nonetheless a proportion of patients are over 65 who have a cognitive insult. Educating the patient, educating their family about trying to avoid delirium, prevent it if you can, um, being aware of when the patient goes home, monitoring their medications, that they're taking them, that they're following their discharge um, recovery um, uh, procedures and their physio, and, and um, keeping an, a, an eye on them that where maybe you, you didn't think you needed to. In terms of paediatric neurotoxicity versus what we're seeing in the elderly, that it's likely that, that there's a different, different mechanism at play. We don't see um, what, what has been seen in, in the children in terms of multiple anaesthetics. We don't see an effect of multiple anaesthesia. What we do see is that patients who have a preoperative level of subtle impairment are the patients who are most at risk and that suggests to us that it's likely that the community cognitive disorders that we see in the population are involved somehow in what we're seeing postoperatively. We just don't have a clear picture on how at this time. Very interesting thing that has come out of all this research and the whole question about how anaesthetics developing, uh, affect the developing brain is the concept that your, your brain may not actually be quite the same after the anaesthetic as opposed to before the anaesthetic, no matter what age you are. So previously there was this concept that you give an anaesthetic, it turns all the, it's like turning a light switch off, it turns all the wiring off, you're unconscious. At the end of the anaesthetic, you turn the switch on again and you're exactly the same, just the, there's electricity in the brain. There's increasing evidence that in fact your brain uh, subtly adapts to the state that it's in. And so if you anaesthetise the brain, your brain actually rewires or the dendrites alter to adjust to that anaesthetised state. So it has rekindled that whole uh, idea that the anaesthetic is actually not just a benign state. And I'm not sure where that will lead, but it's probably the most interesting thing that's coming out of all this research looking at the effect of anaesthetics on the developing brain.